Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Felix from The Rascals. I cannot believe you're here. Welcome, Felix. Well, my pleasure, Don. Nice to see you. Oh, it's nice to see you too. I'm so excited about this. I love Good. all of your music. And I was asking before we hit record if I called you The Young Rascals because you guys did change your name at one point. How come you had to do that? Well, uh, we started off... Um, you know, uh, it's a long story, but we started off uh, with the name The Rascals, which was given to, to us by a very, very wonderful man by the name of Soupy Sale. Oh, yes. Soupy said, you know, I mean, it's a great story, but, uh, you know, we 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 wanted to back him up. Uh, he had a big hit record called The Mouse. And so we 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 invaded the WNEW TV station. I think that's what it was, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> it was a long time ago. And we told him, we said, Soupy, you know, you need a band. He said, why? I said, because you got a hit record, my man. And he <laughs> says, you know, all these years I was without a band and I didn't realize. So <laughs> we started laughing, 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 laughing. And uh, he just kept cracking jokes, you know, and we we really loved him. First of all, he was he was a delightful man. I mean, he was such, such a sweetheart. And he said, what's your name? And then we said, well, you know, we, we got a couple of names. He says, man, he says, I know what I'd like to call you, but we couldn't print it. We couldn't put it on the screen. I said, oh, I got it. <laughs> so uh, as we're going along, he says, you know, this could work because you guys laugh at everything I say. That could come in very handy at a concert. You know? <laughs> so, so he said, well, how about if we call you the Rascals? Because you guys look like real Rascals. Oh, that's funny. okay. So we 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 get the name and we go to the record company, which which we finally got on the to Atlantic Records, which is the greatest day. And then our second release comes out, and we're in California. And our manager calls up, says we can't use the name. So what do you mean we can't use the name? Well, there's a there's a there's a a group on Milton Burrow now. Now we're going back to this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, called the Harmonica Rascals. And they own the rest. So I said, oh, no, man. So he said, and without asking us, he put in the name The Young. Okay. The Young Rascals. So for the rest of time, <laughs> everybody started hassling us about, did that dog really have a circle around his arm? <laughs> oh, man. And so I said, you know what? I'm very sorry. I love you. Change the name. Yes. So we, ch we changed it back. Oh my gosh. What would you say was your genre of music? What would you guys call that? I mean, because that now it's like there's so many different categories. Yeah. What was the genre? Well, you know, in those days it was starting to come from Britain, you know, the Beatles, the Kinks, the Stones. Uh the American groups were starting to come out, the Loving Spoon Flow, the Birds, the Beach Boys, and the Rascals. So we joined whatever that genre was, which I, I think at that time was was pop music you know was yeah. uh, i don't know if it was rock and roll and then you know now it's divided into you know microcosms you know <laughs> it's <laughs> where are we i don't know <laughs> i really don't know yeah okay so you were you played piano though when you were a little kid right right yeah yeah my mom rest her soul she she wanted me to be a classical uh, pianist and uh, i you know like most most parents they give kids lessons and she saw some talent there. And so she enrolled me in this pretty serious uh, uh, music school, which was called the Allaire Music School. It was in New Rochelle, New York. And I had three lessons a week for uh, literally eight years. Wow. Do you play yeah, now? I, well, I still play the keyboard, but I don't play much classical music because I don't know, I kind of drifted away from that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you were going to medical school at one point, right? Right. I was going to. Yeah. That was the plan. Yeah. That was so, for me to be. <laughs> were your parents upset <laughs> when you said music is it? It's got to be music. Well, uh, basically, you know, my dad, you know, he, he kind of like gave me the uh, the opportunity. I was in college. I, I took off a, a summer to go work in the Catskill Mountains. Mm. And and I just loved it. I, I mean, I was just, you know, I said, wow, this is show business. This is the greatest, you know, yeah. I mean, I was making, I, it was at the Raleigh hotel. And, and while I was there and, 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 uh, you know, I've told the story before the, uh, the, uh, this, every weekend a, a headliner would come to the hotel 
And that one particular weekend, Joey D and the Starlighters came. They had this big hit called The Peppermint Twist. Oh, yes. Long before you were around, my dear. No, yeah. but I know all this music. My dad listened well, to every genre oh, so possible. Cool. So you, you, you grew up with all this stuff. That's yep, great. I so did. anyway, long story short, when the, when the uh, uh, summer vacation ended, they were in Europe. And they, their organ player quit. He oh. had just recently been married. So they remembered me. They called. I didn't really have a manager. They called me and, and they said, <laughs> uh, uh, would you like to join us in, in Europe? Well, I mean, wow. I, I, I said, that's, well, uh, let me ask my dad, you know. <laughs> so my dad was a little overwhelmed, you know, because of the fact, well, that's another story, but you know, here I was on a stage in the Catskill Mountains. Yeah. And, and he was a dentist, you know what I'm saying? So he was like a very conservative guy. And he said, well, give it a shot, man. Go. I mean, give it a shot. Give it a year. Well, nobody can make it in a year. Yeah. But but the irony of the situation is, so I, anyway, I took off. I thought I was taking off a semester. I went to Europe. We went to the town of the of, uh, city of Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. And this group opened up for joey that no one had seen in america they were called the beatles oh my gosh yes so i heard these guys you know i saw fresh guys with long hair everybody screaming yelling what is this oh that, that's the beatles i said wow so of course in europe they knew them right but i said well what, what, what's 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 the deal i mean you know what is this this looks like and so anyway, oh. long, very long story short, I said, well, you know, I think I could do this. I mean, this looks like, first of all, a lot of fun. Fun, these, yeah. You know, and second of all, I didn't really, you know, obviously we didn't know about their uh, extreme talent for songwriting. You know, that, that wasn't present uh, in the beginning right. as much as it was after about a year. Yeah. And I said, I, I can definitely do this. And that's, that's where I just made the decision. You know, God wants me to do this. I'm doing it. That's, because it was just too much, you know. Yeah. Who who were you looking up to? Like as you were growing up, what kind of music did you like? What? Well, basically, you know, I I had the good fortune of growing up, uh, you know, near New York City, where Alan Freed brought uh, rock and roll from mm -hmm. Cleveland, mm -hmm. and so I heard the very beginnings of what was to be, you know, rock and roll pop music. Uh, so the people that that I heard, let's say for example, my key, my 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 instrument was a keyboard, was uh, Ray Charles playing piano, yeah, uh, Fats Domino playing piano, Jerry Lee Lewis playing piano, wow, and and I was just I said wow this, I never heard anything like this you know it was was really very very interesting because you know being classically trained it, it's so foreign to what you know these 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 gentlemen were doing. Right. Little Richard, I mean, oh my God! So I, I got really good uh, uh, education in terms of, you know, geniuses. I mean, let's put it like that. These people were all very, very, very good. Right. Do you remember when you like realized that you had made it? Like, do you remember the the day or the record or the when you were like, oh wow, this we're taking yeah. off. This is a big deal. Well, I mean, there's really two questions inside of that. First of all, yeah, we're taking off is one thing. And that was, of course, when Good Lovin' came out mm -hmm. because it just to literally took off. However, when you made it is the best part of that question because here, here's the rub, here's the situation. <laughs> when you're, when you're a, let's say, a, a doctor, okay, and you pass your exams, get that shingle in front of your office, you're a doctor your whole life. When you're a recording artist, you better keep making hit records or there's no such thing as your whole life. Right. It's, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'll I tell you the truth. You know, when I hit, uh, oh, I'd say, I don't know, maybe I, I mean, with all the grace of God, we had ready hit records. And after a couple of records, I said, wow, this is a little shaky here where I'm at. Man. This is not exactly like I'm a lawyer. I'm going to be a lawyer the rest of my life. I'm right. a veterinarian, you know, it was a little bit uh, challenging. Yeah. Oh, I'm say, sure. Yeah. It threw me a little bit, you know. Did you ever stop? 
have you just kept going this whole time just making records all the time or are yeah you... okay pretty much you know i made records of babies that's it you know <laughs> <laughs> and and are you living in the states i live in nashville tennessee okay i so moved do you, down here yeah. do you ever dabble in country have you tried to make any country songs well you know it's funny because even though i've been down here for you know, i've been here down since 1990 Okay. No, no one thinks I'm a Nashvillian as soon as I start talking, you know, <laughs> for some reason. I, I, just, I don't know why. <laughs> it just doesn't compute, you know. Well, it's the same thing when, when you do music, you know, even though I've got this new album out, which is called Then and Now. And I wrote uh, some of the songs with a pretty famous country fellow down here by the name of Steve Warner. And it's so funny because. You know, we write the songs together, we write the lyrics together, and then we sing it. First he sang it, and then I sang it, and it's like a different country, you know, <laughs> only <laughs> mine is not country. It's just so funny because there's a certain inflection in your voice that pushes you towards, uh, let's say, R&B, mm -hmm. or pushes you towards country. So no matter what I do, it's it's a New York voice. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, you still got it though. I've seen videos of yours that are not old, you know, they're pretty recent and your oh, voices. Yeah. Did you oh, always know God. that you could sing or? No, 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 no. That was just a stroke of a real, real luck because, uh, you know, uh, when you start working, uh, you know, in, in my case, I started with a band that played for, uh, uh, private parties, uh, hops mm. in those days, they used to call them, uh, uh, proms. Uh, bar mitzvahs, you name it. Uh, I was asked to sing because I was the only one doing rock and roll in the band. It was kind of a, a band that was based on standards, mm -hmm. you know. So little by little, that became like the high point of this particular band, which was called the Swinging Six, by the way. And we were swinging. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, the, the more you sing, uh, uh, you know, the more you sing, uh, you know, I guess. Uh, and, and then the other the other thing is, you're also uh, emulating great singers, you know, like, for example, we do Marvin Gaye songs, you know, we would do like uh, uh, Smokey Robinson songs, uh, Ray Charles songs. And so the more you do those things, I mean, if you're lucky, you know, you, you develop a voice. Yeah. I saw one of my last videos that I watched of yours. Um, you were talking about how um, that beautiful morning song was about Hawaii. Well, it was written in Hawaii and, and it was about just bliss, I think is the only word, you know, because at that time uh, we had just followed a number one record. I think Groovin was was out just previous to that. And we were in, you know, that paradise. But Hawaii is a very special place to us. Oh, we, my we, gosh. So beautiful yeah. there. And uh, as a matter of fact, if I could put in a little plug here. Do it. You know, well, you know, as I say, the Rascals, we were very, very fortunate to be very very famous in hawaii for some oh, reason the island really took to us you know and we didn't get they didn't really have beetle mania but they had rascal mania <laughs> so uh, we said wow that that's fine uh you know uh let's just be famous here the heck with every place else you no know? kidding that's We're a good place kidding. to be <laughs> well as you know uh so anyway i wrote a song we wrote a song called my hawaii which has been a perennial uh favorite uh, over there for many years it was a tribute to, you know, their love for us and our love for them. Well, you know, this recent tragedy that they had over there oh my is, gosh, is really yes. bad, really bad. And if you've been there, you know, you know, that area. Yeah, we were in Maui and um, right, right where the fires were. That's sure. where our resort was. And when yeah. you're there, you can't believe how beautiful it is. So to hear all the devastation and see all the devastation, it's like, it doesn't compute, you know, it's like, no, there's no yeah. way, there's no way that that beautiful paradise is gone. Well, it's part of it anyway. It's not the whole yeah, thing, but still. Right. So, so we decided let's re-record this song, my Hawaii yeah, and offer it up for charity. So here's where the good luck comes in. My guitar player, who is, who is also a producer, you know, a, of my, some of my albums and he used to work for Dolly Parton. Okay. So he called up his people or her people and she said, yeah, I'd love to sing it with Felix. Oh, I'm telling you. So we got this going and I'll make sure you get a copy because it's just, it's been held up a little bit because 
you know, uh, it's not easy to give something away for nothing today. <laughs> you know, very That's interesting. That's wonderful that you're doing that. Yeah. Had you had you worked with her ever or met no, her? No, nothing? no, I, I never did. No, but Mike did. You know, Mike used to be her guitar player. Okay. And uh, that was so nice of her to say, yes, let's do yeah. it. So basically, um, you know, uh, it, it should be coming out. I mean, it's been a long time. Everybody donated their time. I mean, we had these wonderful people contribute. See, that's the thing about Nashville. There's, there's so much talent here in yeah. every aspect of making a product, you know. Right. Uh, this, so anyway, long story short, my Hawaii, Felix and, and, and Dolly. How about that? That is so <laughs> awesome. I love that. Did yeah. you guys work in the same studio or did you guys each record your parts and they just melded them together? Exa well, ex exactly. What we did is, you know, unfortunately, she's so busy, you know, she's. She She's seems a, like a beautiful person. Well, obviously she must be because, I mean, she didn't hesitate. She just said, let's go. Oh, my gosh. That's and I that would nice. love a copy of that. that well, I, I, I mean, I could send it probably uh, 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 MP, uh, what do you call that? MP3, MP4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd love I, it. I think I have your, uh, I think your, your blurb came through on my email. So I have an email. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the only way I find out how to sign into these things, you know? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I love it that you're so good. So are you touring right now then? Yes, yes. Okay, where are you at right? Where are you going? Well, our next show uh, is in New York City at the Sony Hall, uh, which is May 17th. And then the next day after that, we go to uh, Rhode Island. We go to Woonsocket, Rhode Island. And uh, we're starting up, you know, we're calling it People Gotta Be Free Tour, tour because Lord knows people really got to be free right now. We got a lot of trouble yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we and uh, we're continuing, uh, you know, with June. I've, I've got a special show in June uh, that I'm doing on uh, out in Long Island. Uh, there's a Long Island Hall of Fame out there. Oh. And Yeah. And they're doing a special tribute to Billy Joel. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Who's an old friend of mine. And so I've been asked to come and sing one of his songs and one of my songs. So we're going to do that. And then we just try to keep as busy as we can, you know, because first of all, uh, I love doing it, you know. Yeah. And uh, second of all, you know, like uh, after the, the pandemic, we you know, as I say, uh, we're picking up business again during that uh, during that time is when we did this album then and now. OK, well, that's good that you kept busy doing what you love during that time, because that time was wacky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, was... for people that love to entertain and love to be in front of people and then to have that just literally you were cut off from that cut off from doing what you love yeah and everyone that's associated with the tour the production people the the drivers right the, you know the the uh road managers uh even the agents the booking agents yeah this really really hurt our business uh profoundly you know i'm sure it hurt a lot of businesses too you know oh yeah for sure but un unlike other businesses you know they gave them money for the their employees they, that they, doesn't they do didn't anything. Offer that to us, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, what's your favorite Rascal song? What's one that you just can never get sick of singing? Well, "Beautiful Morning" is always fun, you know. I, I mean, love that's that great one too. Song. And, yeah. and 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 uh, "People Got to Be Free" is another one that's that's always fun. Uh, you know, basically, it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, the time of year. You know, mm -hmm. like if, if it's summer, you know, groove is fun. But you know, th these are like all, all, all part of you. The the songs are all when when you hear one, like for example, if I'm on an elevator and I hear one of my songs, you know, yeah, I always. <laughs> Your head goes right back to what was going on in your mind, either when you wrote it or when you recorded it, you know, because we we had a really, uh, uh, you know, it, it's interesting because uh, we had a wonderful time. I mean, we just, you know, we it was all laughs and smiles. And then later, unfortunately, it turned out to be, you know, like divorce court, you know. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> so anyway, there's pleasant memories and, and I try to dwell on those. Well, for as much sure. As I can. Yeah, because, you know, I, I don't really like the other part. The other part is not so pretty. Right, right. But music just speaks to everybody, different genres for different yeah. people. Yes, and, you does. know, people think of it from their weddings or graduations or just oh, all yeah. these things. You hear a song and it does take you back to that place mentally. So I can't imagine being the one that wrote it or sang it. Well, that's the whole thing that happens when we play live for people. You know, I, I even make an announcement with those very words in it. Let's reconnect. 
Yeah. Because our generation was very connected musically. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't have the Instagrams and the Facebooks and all that stuff that I feel is more divisive than connected. I'll tell you, but yeah, I'm we not going to argue with that at all. Yeah, but we did have music, and and that's the bond that when I see the faces out of the audience, that's the connection, and yeah. their little you know their brains just go oh, what? <laughs> you know, and it's so cute because you know we do this um, uh, we do this cruise called Flower Power. Okay. And Flower Power is sold out a year in advance easily and what is flower power it's a bunch of acts on the sea for i believe seven eight days continuous music it's like woodstock woodstock on water (laughs) woodstock on water and the people once they get on that on that ship they lose their minds (laughs) they just they shove themselves into their old clothes. Yeah. <laughs> they got to fit into that tie-dye shirt. They oh, it is just so much fun. And 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 I, I mean the joy that's on that boat, we should we should bottle it. No kidding. That yeah, is because wonderful. It's really wonderful. You know, I mean seriously, and all day pretty much all night there's music. You can hear, you know, Family Stone, you know, you can hear like the Grassroots, yeah. the Beach Boys. You know, everybody, a lot of us are on those ships yeah. and uh, it, it, it's just great. Well, you'll have to let me know if you ever come to Omaha, Nebraska, because I would well, how you how you, you doing out there. You guys had some weather. My goodness. My son actually lost his home in the tornado. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's it was bad. it was just. But That's you know bad. what? It's it's sad when things like that happen, of course. But the community here is just amazing people just came together and everybody's been helped cleaning up and people pretty bad though yeah then it came back so it came back a second time yeah it's just been relentless but yeah we're we're making it work everybody's everybody's doing okay yeah you know my uh my uh uh, publicist melissa she's from out there yeah that's what she said i saw her area code when she contacted me and i was like what are you (laughs) you're one of my people we have a Nebraskan on our team. Yeah, she, I love and by it. the way, she's fantastic. Yeah, she seems great. She's really, great. really done a great job. You know, yeah. So, well, you're fantastic. Are you on well, social thanks. media at all? Do you do any social media? Uh, well, I do it from a business point of view. You know, uh, I, I don't really, you know, dabble in. Yeah, you know, like that's I, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I really, uh, I'm not a, not a big fan of, you know, I, I mean, to to hear the divisiveness that's mm-hmm. present in our society kind of bothers me, you know. It, yeah. it, it, it's like, are you kidding? I mean, seriously. I mean, uh, 2024, we're still like children here. Yeah. And, you're right. And, and and I really believe that there's outside forces that are making that even even worse, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, we should close that door. Why should we be poisoned by people who don't like us, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. I don't ever talk politics or religion or anything. I keep it all light and let's just talk about music. <laughs> well, God Fun bless stuff. you. Though. You're, you're, you're a sunny day <laughs> sitting behind a microphone. So God bless you. Oh my yeah. gosh. Thank you so much, Felix. I just love that I got a chance to meet you. You are so sweet well, and I can't you. wait to air this and um, go see him, everybody. Go see him. He's still got it. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, I'm going to send you a copy. I'd love uh, it. Uh, ASAP of this uh, uh, MP4 because it, eventually it's it's coming out. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you'd love to hear it. I it, would. It, it sounds like Disney. I'll just <laughs> give it. <laughs> she sounds like she's about maybe 10 years old, 12 years old. Oh, my gosh. It's incredible. She I can't like little, wait to hear little, it. Little, little, little girl. Yeah. So, yeah. But oh. God bless you. And, hey, God bless your dad. Absolutely. For bringing us to you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You take care and I'll be in touch soon. All right. Thank you. Take take care. All right. You too. Bye-bye.